Welcome to another episode of Athlete Things. And today we have Ewan Belgrove on the podcast, the fridge, the bar fridge, fridge freezer. He's built like a freaking, I don't know what, beer barrel. He's drinking a beer <laughs> right now. How you doing, sir? I'm good, good. How are you? Good, man. Thanks for coming on. Um, just finished up huge performance at New South Wales States. Was it um was it everything they kind of planned for, hoped for? Everything and more. Yeah. It was definitely uh my I definitely needed to redeem myself mentally anyway, just to prove to people that I am someone to met uh they they can't, you know, sort of, you know, that's the best way to explain it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, let's um yeah. let's dive right into that because obviously for you, like this year has been a pretty big year in terms of the world's performance. You know, I yeah. think we all know that for you, that world's performance was, it yeah. had a huge lead up, right? In terms yeah. of from where you started and where you came onto the scene yeah. um, into that world's performance. So let's go right at the start of that. And let's talk yeah. about the prep into worlds in terms of training, how yeah. you're leading into it. And we'll go from there. Um, For me, it was it just, huge mental thing to get back into training because after COVID and stuff, I didn't train really for two years. Um, And then I got encouraged by Matt and Gaz at GenFit to get back into powerlifting. Um, And from there, I fell back into love with the sport because I fell out for, um, for those two years. Um, Enjoyed the process, getting stronger again, actually getting PBs um, and all of that. And work, training in that new environment, definitely... Um, made training more enjoyable um but yeah it was just more it was sort of like just to be a better me at that point in time when i was getting back into training so at that point i was like 105 kilos um and stuff to try to yeah yeah 105 at your height yeah yeah i was i was was a big big bull yeah (laughs) yeah fridge yeah exactly um yeah, just getting, yeah, I was just loving to actually just losing the weight and yeah, just getting strong from that. Yeah. And then so post COVID, obviously getting back into training. And then yeah, I guess you would have had the qualifier for worlds, which would have been in the junior worlds in Melbourne. The junior the nationals, junior nationals. Sorry, junior yeah. sorry, junior nationals in Melbourne and then the prep started yeah. the worlds. Yeah. Um so let's talk about in terms of just like Let's talk about the squat record in terms first with training. Obviously, yeah. training coming into you know that world's comp was yeah. popping off. Yeah, it was. Yeah, squatting. And yeah. I guess in terms of like you know your performances in training, was that you know lining up with your expectations of what you thought you could do as well? Yeah, no, definitely. Like the training was feeling amazing. Um, during that prep, um, there were some slight hiccups with gear changes and stuff which did throw a bit um a bit span in the works especially for squat leading up to worlds so i had to make do with that and i was even though that change happened i was happy with where where squats were sitting um but yeah just i didn't yeah i was expecting i was really hoping for like a um i think it was 730 opening total um just depending on how the day went, the warm ups felt great in the uh, in worlds in the warm up area. Um, seemed like the last warm up squat that felt fine. I think it just stage fright really is what got me when I walked down the platform, seeing that crowd. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. curious because like you've you've been on the world stage yeah. multiple times, right? Like yeah, you've been as a sub junior, you actually won it like when back when you were sub junior yeah you were there in sweden what was kind of different about this one um it was probably more again it was the nerves of like last time i was in sweden it didn't go too well because i on my second squat my knee went um so that was like another like not good turnout worlds and i think that had to go like a bit of a play with it um walking out there going like shit is this gonna happen again or like stuff like that and that ended up actually what got the better of me on the day um yeah it was just like i felt like the strength was there it was just mentally um especially in that depth was just yeah it was just super daunting um just happened to be that day uh, unfortunately yeah I'm, I'm curious too and just turns into the 
I, I know you just said 7.30 on the openers, um, but was the 300 kilo squat opener always the plan? Yeah, Based that was that, yeah that was always the plan. Um, because I hit three hundred pretty much consec like every week pretty comfortably, um during that block, um and same thing on the like yeah warming up on the day squat felt great um strength felt like it was there, um but obviously I, I, yeah as soon as I walked out on that platform I, like it was a bit of like a shell shock sort of feel um and yeah that they yeah, that threw me <laughs> into yeah. a bit of a spin. For context, just for the listeners, so the world junior record was 308 kilos at the time? I believe so, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So your plan, like, heading into this meet was to open at 300 and then, I guess, take it on the second attempt? Yeah, um, 310 was on the cards for second um, because 310 felt had been feeling pretty comfortable leading up. Uh, done that, I think it was three or four times during the block. Um, and I felt confident would do it hitting that as well. Um, and if I did hit that, um, we were just going to full YOLO it, go 320 it for the third, just because why not? Um, <laughs> no, no chips needed. Yeah, exactly. No chips yeah. needed, just plus 10. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm not, I'm weird up like that for squat. Um, I hate doing like little chips and stuff like that. Um, for some, for me, it just doesn't feel right, especially in training and stuff. I do pretty big chips warming up um stuff like that yeah i've never been good with little chips yeah i guess like just in terms of the mentals right we can see how that like stage fright would have occurred for you just in terms yeah. of like it was such a long time man like you yeah i guess you were kind of called for and everyone knew about you in terms of being the squatter and taking yeah. the squat record right yeah. from right from the start, right, in terms of that 2018, I think it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. at the Oceanas. Um, yeah. Like, Instagram wasn't as big back then in terms of powerlifting, but, yeah, like, YouTube certainly was, and there was, yeah. you know, YouTube compilations going out of you, <laughs> getting heaps of views, and, like, yeah. the comments are saying, like, this guy is the next fucking Brett Gribbs and, and all yeah. that. So, yeah. do you feel like that had a big play, too? coming into the world not not for this world no it was more of a mental thing for me just being back in the sport um because literally after sweden i didn't compete i yeah i mentally i was messed up from there like because i had felt like I had so much um i got to prove to people that i am what i'm showing i am to be in like instagram and stuff like that um but this time leading into worlds like even though i did get disqualified in the end i I took it. I took it well. Um, mm. I was just having banter with the guys in the back, warming up stuff, like just cheering them on, because like in in the end of the day, like it's it happened. Like I can't, you know, change what happened. Um, yeah, it was. It did suck, but I just, yeah, I I reckon the one in Sweden actually felt worse actually than the one um this year. Yeah, I remember watching that, and it was like. I guess I also felt the disappointment you had because it was like, bro, on your second attempt, like your knee was yeah. fucked. You ended up having yeah. to take that token deadlift. Yeah. It, was just, it was like heart wrenching, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, how, how different would it have been had you, you bombed back then compared to now? Cause I think it definitely sounds like you've gone through this kind of like maturation process where you just, you just see the sport differently. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. Ever since uh Sweden, I've, a completely different perspective now that I've gone back into training. It's like I'm doing it more for me, um, just enjoying the sport rather than um feeling like I need to prove myself. That's why I really took into states um this year. I just I've just been enjoying training, um, just yeah, doing it for me, not really paying attention to social media or anything like that, just wanting to rock up on the day and just prove to myself that um I am better than what I was, you know, at Worlds and prove that I can actually hit that 300 at 83 in a competition. Because in that in that middle stint, you did a few comps at 93, hey? Uh, for my qualifiers, uh, wait, uh, before uh, junior states last year, yeah, I did um, a couple comps at 93. But that was just because I was too lazy to get down <laughs> to 83, to be honest. Um yeah, I was, at that point in time, I wasn't thinking about doing nationals and stuff. Because when I was doing 93, I just did 93 states. I didn't do nationals. Yeah. Um, Because I at that time, I was going to be bothered doing actually training hard enough for that. 
Um, but then I yeah, got a new environment, started training, loving training more. And then that's when I got back, actually decided to get back down to 83. Yeah. Was it, saw... was the plan, sorry, was the plan always going to be eventually 83s again? Um, at first, uh, no, because I didn't actually enjoy powerlifting that much when I was at 93. I was just doing it for just doing states and stuff, just having a little bit of fun. Um, but then, yeah, once I got into that new training environment, um, and the new, new Matt having being more support, but being super supportive, um, because he was, yeah, he was my new coach. Um, really, but I guess showed me the potential I could have if I, um, put effort back into training and it, it's definitely paid off since then. Mm. Yeah. So do you, do you feel like, you know, heading into that period, like through COVID where you fell out of like for the love of powerlifting, do you feel like a lot of that was caused by that kind of big hype and big rush so early on at like such a young age? I definitely think so. Um, because at that point in time, I felt like I was like a golden child. Um, being, I think it was like 17, 18 at that, yeah, at that time. Um, just felt like that's the way to go. That's my future sort of thing. Like I can make a career out of this. Um, but then, you know, the hit the reality hit me was like, you can't really make a career out of this unless you've got hundred thousand followers, stuff like that, got all these sponsorships. Um, and that's when I've decided to take uh, step back from training a bit and focus more <laughs> on my uh, actual career. Yeah. Not now though, with Sheffy though, you could get, be up there with the squat world record, brother. Yeah, exactly. Take that bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like yourself as well? Um, you've grown over that time because you were i do remember seeing you in swansea at apu's first nationals there yeah um you were kind of considered the golden boy the golden yeah. child back then yeah. like yeah did you and you come across a little bit snobby i would say yeah. i had a broken arm though i was like walking around on yeah. painkillers the whole time um, <laughs> yeah but i remember a guy that i was um coaching uh tried to say hello and you kind of just like brushed him and he was like oh didn't even say hello to me. and i was like Who cares, oh, okay bro? but um, this was this was years yeah, ago. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I think you're in the middle of competing at the same time as well, though. So I think you were just like yeah. more zoned in. But then when I seen you uh, on the weekend, it was like completely different person compared to yeah. way back then. Yeah. Like back then, I definitely wasn't aware of how I was acting. That's never like how I like coming across. Um, but obviously mm -hmm. back then, I had a bit of an ego being like, oh, I just came into the sport yeah. and doing so well, um, which definitely boost my ego especially when people would I guess come up to me and be like oh I'll reward you um stuff like that so that, I guess that back when I was 17 18 that would fuel my ego but yeah ever since then I've just really taken a step back and just really focused on I guess how I uh make people I guess see me and stuff like that like the real me really not like a egotistic little young boy <laughs> just those those small interactions yeah yeah. yeah, I think adding adding to that like that golden child story, right? Like, yeah, I think before I started powerlifting, I remember I went to like the Australian fitness show, and Adonis yeah. had a stand yeah. at the time. Yeah, and they uh, were like advertising this this eighteen year old uh, year old guy is gonna do a squat world record attempt, and I was like, holy yeah. shit, this is fucking crazy, right? Yeah, and then you walk like ten meters down down in the other stalls and you see a powerlifting meet going on. I'm like, yeah, like I I didn't know what was happening in terms of, like powerlifting at the time. I was just like regular gym goal and I was like yeah. why isn't this why isn't this guy like over here yeah like this guy's strong as fuck like why why isn't he doing that yeah but it, I guess it was just like it, it showed how much potential or how much potential people saw you yeah. had at the start yeah yeah that's definitely um I reckon what I guess at the same time ruined training for me is to say if I had a bad session I would feel like it wasn't just a bad session for me it was a bad session for um like people viewing me sort of things like that yeah. I, put, I guess i kind of took that weight on uh when i was 17 18 and then yeah just not really knowing any better just feeling like um i wasn't trying to prove myself i was trying to prove to everyone else that i am the next big thing yeah i can feel yeah, like see trying that, to put right? on a show like, yeah yeah i can see how that would have aided you as well because it's like you wouldn't have felt like you were letting yourself down if you had a bad session you're almost letting the country down because yeah. people were people were talking about like you know this guy's finally gonna australia's gonna have someone that's gonna be able to um you know podium get on the yeah. on the podium 
uh, do well and do all these things. Like imagine what he's going to be like as an open is what I remember yeah. people saying. And then it's yeah. like, and then you, I guess I, you could see like it just, that got to you. Yeah. Took that break. Uh, yeah. came, I guess it just like gave everyone a chance to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. now it's like, now it's just like coming back and just reminding everyone what you have done. Cause I know like you were there from the start of Napier. I was there as well. So I've yeah. seen you, I couldn't compete at Swansea, but I seen what you did there and it was huge, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and everyone, everyone had like that, that massive hype around you. And yeah. I could see how that would just kill like a 17, 18 year old back then. Just like having this, this huge, I guess, um, how do I word it? Like the belief of so many people behind you to try and yeah. do well. And then when you couldn't, it would yeah. just kind of just put you down. So down all yeah. the time. Yeah, that's definitely what um Sweden brought on. Like that was, I feel like the weight of like um the weight of everyone's watching and supporting me had just come bearing down on me after that second squat. Um, Mm -hmm. especially to my family and stuff. We we always spend a lot of money going out there and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, now I've wasted all this money and time and like what was training for, um, sort like that. But going into Romania this year, um, I was already going in going like. I don't really care what the result is. I've come back in the support in the sport and I'm already supporting the country, which is a huge achievement in itself. Yeah. Um, and from that, just being able to see heaps of familiar faces and stuff um, from the other countries and that getting to make new friends and stuff like that. In the end, for me, I enjoyed more than actually competing. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's one thing I missed. I can relate to you in terms of just like feeling like, you know, you're like letting people down i felt the exact same this year in malta when i hurt my back on my third squat and then from there the competition just like got worse and worse and worse yeah missed my last bench and then only got my opener deadlift and my back went like being someone who you know loves deadlifts people know i love deadlifts people know yeah. i can deadlift heavy yeah and then at the most important meet you know of my career so far yeah i knew people were here at perth you know all crowded around the tv watching yeah and then like knowing like that was literally the first thing i thought about and that was probably the first thing i was upset about the most yeah just kind of that embarrassment almost in terms yeah. of like feeling like you've let people down yeah yeah i know what you mean yeah um i want to talk about obviously you're having beers right now on the pod <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah like you went up to 93. It seems like you said you've gone up to 105. You know, yeah. you've gone up to, you go up weight quite easily. Yeah. First question, how heavy were you when you squatted at 320? I was uh, 88. Damn. Yeah. So it's it wasn't far. Yeah. 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 Second question. We've heard some rumors of some yeah. pretty big cuts maybe some weight cuts in a bath yeah yeah <laughs> oh, he's, he's getting excited <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what's um what's your this can segue what's your biggest weight cut that you've done overnight and yeah. i guess what's your worst weight cut story probably the worst and worst the worst cut was the biggest cut i did um i think it was five kilos the night before um and that was a, that was that was a bad that was i was i think it was i was 18 um i think i just went into a period where i i didn't really care about my weight and all of a sudden i think it was states came rolling in well, i think it was states when that came rolling in um and i was like shit um really overweight <laughs> <laughs> and then like the week out i was speaking to my coach and we were both like fuck like what do you do so a huge huge water cut i i think i went down to like 15 1600 calories a day to try and like lose as much weight as i can so i think i was like eight eight kilos eight or nine kilos on the week before um Damn. above so um you were, were trained like you were at that like 92 ish mark that you competed yeah, up yeah 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 and i was yeah oh, that was a big mistake on my half is the at the time that coach actually thought i wasn't making weight um and i was just being a bit naughty and not telling him um 
<laughs> and then we've we've got our athlete chat on but like as coaches right now we're like you're yeah. that client <laughs> you're like yeah. that athlete that doesn't tell us yeah, yeah so, going, sorry. so yeah ended up being like a i think a three-hour sauna session um Oof. and then straight off so i was still everywhere after the sauna session um so i ended up just wrapping up i had a sleeping bag and jump from trackies on and then just i fell asleep in that in my bed um to <laughs> keep, yeah they keep sweating um woke up i was i think i was still a little bit over so i was just spitting in the cup the whole way to the calm uh apparently i looked like a, just a dried up raisin when i got there <laughs> my lips were cracking and bleeding i was i was in it yeah i i think that was a very bad comp um that day yeah that was gonna be my next question how you went um i <laughs> just got 260 i think yeah um because we were in the warm-up area, and I started warming up, and I started, like, my legs started sh- was just shaking when I was squatting. And my coach was like, yeah, this is not good. So we opened, I think, like, 2.30 or something like that. Um, And bench was – uh bench was actually all right that day. It was deadly. De- my chest has kept cramping for deadlifts. Yeah. Um, I think I got my opener, and then I gave up. Um, so my chest just felt like it was about to snap. Because – um. I saw you in Melbourne at Junior Nats and you had like the, the cramping problems with your pec. Yeah. And then in Newcastle, when I saw you and I saw you sucking on pickles. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then chewing on and spitting out of the bin. Yeah. yeah. So you'd run, you'd run out of the pickle juice out of the jar. So you were sucking on them and then chewing and then spitting them out. Yeah. And then you were waiting to do like your open or your second attempt and you were like rubbing your chest. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> I was like, oh no, it's happening again for him. No, the, the, thankfully, actually having actually sucking sucking on those pickles, chewing them, spitting out <laughs> the bin actually worked. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, thankfully there was enough pickle juice from all of that. There were some horrible pickles. They were rank. They didn't. They didn't look good, man. I no, the, I literally, I literally <laughs> picked the biggest jar from the shelf, the most pickle juice. I don't care how cheap it is, as long as there's enough pickle juice in it. Um, and that's obviously a big mistake. It, was like, it tastes like, like uh, you know, when like you eat a bad apple, like furry. Oh, like what? you know when i like, eat a bad apple or something like that, it tastes like sort of like fairy oh, like sort yeah, of texture yeah, yeah, i was yeah. i was chewing on the pickles it tasted it was like that and i was that's why i was gagging in front of you like spitting into the bin <laughs> just like this is feral um but yeah that <laughs> ended up paying off <laughs> yeah man that was funny as i look over you're just like sucking on this big old pickle like it looked like <laughs> yeah, it looked like yeah. it looked like nothing was coming out of it too and i think that's when you started chewing it yeah that's exactly like, oh. <laughs> yeah then you offered me the parade, parade and i was like nah i'll be all good oh that's right yeah i offered you a power <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> i was like no nah, these pickles will be all right <laughs> well you uh you didn't cramp no no my yeah that no, was, was it was a good day <laughs> yeah. I can just remember Sam that day just just like hitting me on the shoulder, be like, Wait, look, "Look at you, fucking sucking on pickles." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll take my head right now. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't. Uh, I don't think I had many athletes of myself, so I was just helping out. So I was just roaming around, and then yeah, that was probably the highlight. That was that was good, <laughs> yeah. good highlight of the day. Yeah, I actually did almost throw up from that. I was fucking horrible. Do you always do the pickle juice out of the jar? Yeah, ever since I started competing, I've been using pickle juice. Sure. Um, yeah, it was, um, one of the guys he's trained with was a, like a neuro doctor and something. And then he said, pickle juice is one of the best things to have obviously yeah. after cutting. It's so ever since then, I've been drinking pickle juice. Uh, can't be bothered buying the Amazon stuff because it's a rip off. I was going to say, you haven't seen the little things you can get. Yeah. What's... But they're like, like 10 bucks a bottle. How much is a jar of pickles? Uh, that was like three bucks that jar. Oh, bargain, <laughs> mate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so how much did you cut for New South Wales dates? Um uh, five, five kilos. True. So that's like about your average. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, I was eighty, yeah, I was eighty eight on Monday. Yeah, and that's just like water load gut cut food manipulation. No, no gut cut. Straight just water. Straight water, um, straight pickles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm curious real quick because say you go, Steve. 
So so you you want to save that seven bucks on your jar of pickles and you're willing to to almost spew up in the warm up room. Yeah. But how much money do you spend on beer a week? Oh true. <laughs> <laughs> you got a point there. Um yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> it's like revelation um, live. But, yeah, that's true, but I mean beer does taste much better than pickle juice, so I mean I might rather pay money. For beer. I mean, if beer held to cramping, you'd be seeing me drinking that during the con. <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it does. Maybe you should try it. Are you allowed? No, no allowed, I'm, eh? I already asked. <laughs> well, can apparently, have, can apparently Tony Cliff, apparently Tony Cliff uses it to dehydrate himself. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Before comps, yeah. Okay. Um, but you're allowed to have like <laughs> right, whiskey shots, coming. eh? <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not huge. I just want to, you know, cold beer. I don't really want a whiskey shot. <laughs> Maybe we should get like the non-alcoholic beer and then just have that for like rehydration. Nah, that tastes like um kombucha. Doesn't taste too good. <laughs> I think I say dog's piss then. Yeah. <laughs> you went you went the you went the PG route. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've gone down that path trying to drink less alcohol and it doesn't work. Yeah. Um so then what okay. Okay, from now then. Okay, let's go. Let's go like, you know, the weight fluctuations. Do you see, as he's drinking a beer, <laughs> do you see you like, <laughs> no, nah, nah, it's good. It's good. Do you, um, I guess like, you know, take your world's prep, for example, Yeah. squatting the 320 and yeah. then having to kind of cut weight and then travel. <clears throat> Obviously you seem like a guy who likes to enjoy a beer, likes to enjoy yeah. life as well and has this good mental space with training at the moment. Yeah. Do you plan to always kind of just have like this fluctuation up in weight where you let yourself kind of get heavier and yeah. then just deal with it? Or do you plan on kind of like trying to stay lighter and train at a closer body weight, like a five kilo mark? I probably, I'd like that. Or at the moment, I'm already back up. I think I'm at 89 already. Um, so I prefer sitting around 89 to 91 um, just for mental sake and just being able to enjoy food, go out whenever you can, stuff like that. And I can comfortably sit in that weight range if I do drink and eat normally. Um, what I found actually hard from this state's prep from Wells was being under the, I was, I think I was under 88 the whole time eating into states. Yeah. And I found that hard, um, especially strength wise, because I feel, you know, nice and strong, enjoying my own food and stuff like that. Um, and then so yeah leading up to states actually training felt pretty difficult compared to well, like world's training felt really good because i was already in that 88 to 91 and training felt strong i felt confident where leading the states especially for bench and deadlifts i had no idea what was going to be happening at states that day um to, just to be honest i could the the week of i could only just i was barely holding 260 for deadlifts um I felt like I felt um shocking purely because you just hadn't been pulling as heavy in training because you were sitting lighter. Yeah, it was that as well. But like um mentally, I just because I wasn't full all the time and stuff like that, and enjoying myself, I just felt weaker in general. Yeah. Um, mentally as well. Um, so bench was another big thing as well. Like I could, I was struggling to do one sixty five. And I was getting um, help with 170 and stuff. Um, so it, the, I was super surprised how well um, bench and deads went actually at States that day. Yeah. So you... Deadless were phenomenal. Always, yeah. Yeah. Deadless were really good. Um, so you almost like... It's not... I wouldn't say it's the opposite. So you almost like... Well, it's not the opposite, but you plan <laughs> to... Or you enjoy training even kind of heavier... Yeah. Purely just from like the motivation and mental side of things in terms of enjoying, you know, balance in life. Yeah. But also because you feel stronger, so you get more momentum in your training lifting yeah. heavier at a heavier body weight. Yeah. And then you just cop the cut. Yeah, because for some reason, whenever I cop the cut, um, it doesn't seem to be too bad if I do it right. Um yeah. because like during even though like uh the couple months before I'm actually cutting weight, I just switch over to whole food and actually instead of drinking beer i just drink spirits to help with the calories <laughs> <laughs> um but i still sit in that 88 to like 91 by eating 
better food and stuff for training. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which helps a lot with the actual cut down for me as well, rather than just yeah, cutting out, you know, just going straight cut. Um, I find it easier for me to go straight to go to Whole Foods for a couple of months before the cut and limiting alcohol and then actually starting the cut. Bit of fucking meat and veg, mate, and some beers, eh? Yeah. Well, no, no beer. Actually, no beer the whole time during the well, cut. Okay, what's... Do you have a favourite low-carb beer? Probably, uh, I think it's Bloke Lager. Bloke Lager? Yeah. I haven't heard it. I was going to yeah. say better beer. Better, better beer be- or Billy? Better beer, I thought, was the one to go for, but it was until my mate introduced me. I think it's to... Let me get the link for, that for you guys. It's called Bloke Lager, huh? Do you have an affiliate link? Fridge 10. I wish. <laughs> have you ever considered just staying at 93 if that's where you feel happy, healthy, and strong? The thing is, if I decide to go to 93, in my head, I've got to sit at um, oh, like yeah, 90, 95, 96 yeah, yeah. in my head. Um, so for some reason, it's how I am. And then mm. I feel really lethargic around that way because like like 105 and stuff i was struggling to wipe my ass it was fucking horrible <laughs> yeah like walking up st- <laughs> walking upstairs and stuff it was i was out of breath and i yeah i was just I was just a lard um imagine man those uh those arms aren't reaching around there very far just imagining <laughs> your body yeah. shape <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay let me just put that in the chat but yeah it's called um yeah, it it's good because it's no carb and it tastes like a craft beer. So it's better, better beer. Check it out. Thanks, yeah. mate. And we can <laughs> yeah. use, use, your, use your code. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, well, how, how about this? Okay, you you squatted 320 at 88. Yeah. What about rolling into a comp at like 88, 90? Yeah. and squatting 320 325 yeah that that would be nice but at the same time i've got to think about who i'm competing against yeah um especially international level if i do do that at 93 so i would yeah. i'll be up against some um, i think it's gavin and i come over the other 93 they're like in the Peco. yeah Peco. yeah they're like in yeah, the, a lot. I mean, high, the heaps. yeah they're up yeah. in the high 800s nearly 900s so yeah. that's a big big jump for me Especially because my obviously my deadlifts is shocking compared <laughs> to the international stage, so I'll be like left in the dust. Yeah, so it's kind of like you got this like blend of sitting heavier so you can enjoy yourself, yeah, but wanting to stay eighty three for the competitive side yeah. still too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. for for me in the the end goal now is because I can't get the junior record is definitely to go for the open. I think it's three twenty point five. Yeah. Um, but honestly, if one thing me and Matt, my coach, talked about on leading up was like, if squats feel like, you know, just su- superb that day, well, we're just going to try and chip it for 321 at Worlds. Just um, see how that went. Um, but now that would be, yeah, being an open, I'd love to go for the open record. Um, but I probably won't be going to the world stage for a couple of years just due to um, probably financial and then obviously taking time off work and stuff at the moment. It's not the thing I can do. Um, but I would still love to do the um, training for states and nationals. And then hopefully, because I think, how what's it under? It opens under 35s? Uh, 40, I believe. Oh. 30, 39? Yeah. yeah. So I still got so many years to come back into open so i reckon for me um leave a couple of years for the international stuff and then come and then after like two or three yeah two about three years i'll probably come back into international competing and then go for that um squat yeah interesting who holds it i guess who holds it right now you go down i was gonna oh, say yeah. like so like the next next four or five year plan for you is still to kind of like sit at this 88 range and kind of cut down when it is time to compete yeah, 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 yeah. Because I always feel comfortable um, sitting at 88 to 91. It's just if I, um, I don't know, even if like, if I do my normal activities and stuff, it's pretty hard for me to get above 91. Um, mm. 
But yeah, it's funny because like spike, I can spike so quickly from 83, obviously into 88, 89, but going above 91 seems to be pretty difficult, which is good for me. Um, so I like sitting around this weight. Um, yeah, and love training around this weight. I guess yeah. it's almost like that. You have that trade off where if you feel good, happy, training goes well, and everything's good for you yeah. sitting at that body weight, you it's the trade off for the suffering of doing that cut for a week's worth. Yeah, it. no, hundred percent. Um, yeah. there's one thing as well that, um, probably the new job and stuff, I don't train till like 8 30 now at night, so yeah, so 8 8 30. So I don't finish training till um, sometimes at 10, then I get home pretty late. Um, but that's but that's probably been the biggest um spanner in, um, in training is obviously the late night sessions now because at the moment I've got usually not many people around if I need assistance or anything like a spot. So I pretty much got to go all in mentally, especially for the squat. Mm-hmm. Um, especially mm-hmm. if I think if you've seen the last like 300 I did and stuff, I just haven't yeah. been having spotters and stuff just for mental sakes, um, just to prove that I don't need a spotter to do those sort of things, which I definitely reckon helped the States. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Cause I think you did the three, you did one of the three tens with no spot, I think. Yeah. In the lead up. Yeah. Yeah. That, but yeah, lead up before Wells. Yeah. I did three ten without spotters. Mm. Yeah. what's um just to start wrapping it up i guess like looking back across this how many years it's been you started when you were 16 yeah what year was that 2016 yeah shit so looking back at like you know all these years certainly you know a bit of a roller coaster some ups yeah. and some downs what would be you know you've already kind of hinted at it a lot like with the mental side but what's like big kind of lesson that you've learned through these past like five, six years, missing the record, you know, building up to it, yeah. missing, and then now moving forward. What's one big kind of takeaway? To do it for train, do it for you. Don't yeah. um, let anyone else push you to do anything else that you don't want to do. Well, um, especially with that pressure and stuff. Um, at the moment, I'm training has been more efficient. I'm getting stronger because I want to be um, to myself a better me rather than looking at people going, I'm going to be a better me for you sort of thing um so definitely looking after your mental state and pressure from my from the outside um has definitely been the biggest thing i've learned um throughout all these years in powerlifting that's awesome man he's young he's wise (laughs) likes drinking beer likes pickle juice that's it That's awesome, man. Yeah, we. I mean, yeah. we've certainly seen that growth too, right? Like what Steve was saying in terms of yeah. how you've progressed through the years. So, man, that's um, yeah, that's awesome, and it's 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 sick that you've kind of found that and you can kind of stick to that now as you move through your training. Whether you you're yeah. busy with work and you can't compete internationally, or you're just you're going full steam ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also wanted to say, Steve, I'm sorry to your client. Like, I seemed like a bit of a jerk back then. <laughs> no, it's, it's ages ago, man. Yeah, so I'm um, yeah. You were you were dog mode. You were in the zone, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think you uh, actually. I think you spoke after the competition, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he, he changed his mind, so it was, it was fine. Okay. <laughs> I can just remember that moment because I was just like in my in my sling, just like yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <Whatever."> <laughs> in pain, just I, yeah. I was just kind of just like I wish I was fucking competing right yeah. now. So, <laughs> I don't care that, that bloke yeah. just brushed you off. Yeah. I don't care you and being a dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks so much, man. We'll um, um we'll leave it there. Thanks, dude. No, good. Thank you for having me. Easy. Thank you. Uh, all good. Have a good night.